Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Today we cover map maximum abstract probability and maximum likelihood decoding. The outline goes like this. We will start with the likelihood functions, maximum likelihood decoding, and we'll look at the decision rules for the case of map and ML, maximum abstract probabilities and the maximum likelihood decision. Now, what happens in, in the decoding problem is that we receive a vector x and our job is to detect which message out of these was transmitted so detecting a problem detecting detection problem at the receiver is to estimate or detect which message i am showing this in green for example i am having a constellation of three points but what we get at the receiver is only this point so after we receive the signal the signal will be translated into an observation vector which is a point in space our job is to find out which one of these messages was transmitted we can define the likelihood function for a given m1 the likelihood of being uh, m1 or m2 or m3 we can define it as the probability of receiving x given that was what transmitted is m1 so we have lm1 lm2 lm3 and then we can compare them so we can refer to this conditional probability or conditional density function for x given m as a likelihood function now note that lm the likelihood function and the conditional probability have the same form but they have different individual meanings. So this is more generalized. We can make them equal in the case of uh, our example or our scenario. We have the likelihood function, which is related to the probability. And we have also the conditional probability for a given M given X or uh, when we observe X. Now, because the, uh, the log function is monotonic, instead of observing lm we can observe log of m so this is called the log likelihood function this is the, lo the likelihood function l and the log likelihood function is if you take there notes that we are looking for the maximum or the minimum likelihood it will not change if we take log the maximum will remain the maximum and the minimum will remain the minimum because the log likelihood function is monotonic now let's summarize the steps here a signal S is transmitted with probability 1 over M if they are equiprobable and the signal takes duration of T and there are different signals S1, S2, S3 up to capital S. Now after receiving the signal, the signal is applied to N orthonormal spaces and those spaces is, uh, will be represented as a point in the Euclidean space. For example here, this point in a space of n made of 3 is uh, representing our transmitted signal showing this in green vector or this point here si is it is known as a transmitted signal point or message point the, the set of signals that are possible let's say 3 or 4 or 5 form the constellation or the signal constellation like for example in here on this corner i'm showing 2 capital m equal to 2 sorry capital n equal to 2 the number of pieces and capital m equal to 4 by 4 which is 16 so these 16 points can be represented in only two bases after applying the received signal x this is the received observation we'll have received signal we're going to match filter or correlate we get a point on space we will apply this to an orthonormal basis function and we'll get this observation x so although we transmitted this point will be received as this because there is noise and this noise is referred to as a uh, small w received vector x represent the received signal in n point dimensional space or n dimensional space and if we keep tracking points after point you will find you will find out that you have a cloud of points so every point will be assuming we have relatively no noise and we'll, we'll have two dimensional usually if we assume gaussian noise we'll have two dimensional distribution 
the receive signal is if we assume AWGN lies inside this Gaussian distributed cloud centered here. If you want to look at um, 3D, it will look like this, but of course flipped. So this is the point. As you go away, you have list points scattered around the point. So the maximum likelihood, our problem in hand is when we do a signal detection problem, given the observation X vector shown in purple, perform a mapping from X to an estimate M. Which one of these would like to map this point to which one out of these 16, for example, was transmitted, such that the probability of error is minimized in making the decision. We would like to have a minimum error because being here, we could, we could have transmitted this, but small noise, we could have transmitted this, but with large noise, we ended up here. We want to maximize our decision. Given an observation X and after detection of M, the probability of error is probability would like to have this probability uh, probability of error. We're going to have an error if if we choose M. Of course, X is something that we observe, so X is given. The probability of error is if if we choose M, which was not sent. So if you choose anyone that's not correct, we have we have committed an error. Or we can say it's one minus the probability of M choosing M that was sent. So it's one minus the probability of making correct decision. To maximize or to minimize uh, the error, we need to maximize this one because there is a minus sign here. So either you maximize this, you minimize the error, or you maximize the probability of doing it correctly. Maximize, minimize, maximize. Now we can define the apostrophe probability, the maximum apostrophe probability. Remember that the decision rule is we would like to have an estimate M equal to M if the probability of this specific M is greater than any other M. You would like to choose MI such a way that if you compare it with any other M, you'll get always the maximum possible probability. You want to optimize this. You want to maximize this probability. This decision rule is referred to as maximum a posteriori probability. We call it a posteriori because we have already observed X that's at the receiver side. And if you take the first letters, we have the, we call it the map decoder or the map rule. You would like to maximize the probability after receiving X. Remember in the likelihood before, this was flipped. So now X is given. If you observe X, then you want to know what was M that was transmitted. And that's called the maximum a posteriori probability. We can write this in terms of X given M. And for that, we know to flip the condition, we need to use Bayes' rule. So optimum decision rule based, the same decision rule, but if we want to represent it in terms of a priori probabilities, because these are a posteriori probabilities after reception. So if you want to, you, to, to write it in terms of a priori probabilities, then let's say that the probability of given uh, given uh, given uh, symbol is pi, and the likelihood function is x given. This is called the likelihood function. This is a posterior probability. We can write it in in the following format. So I ref I will replace this using Bayes' rule, and it's it's going to be pi. This is going to be scaled. So this exact rule using Bayes' theorem. This can be replaced with that. And this guy can be replaced with that. So this is the same decision rule. It's not different. It's called the maximum a posteriori probability. It's a map decoder, but of course, um, in terms of the a priori probabilities. Remember that you have to scale your decision by the expected probability. Now the maximum likelihood decoder for map rules. I'm just re-reproducing uh, the formula from before. We note here that this denominator is common for, for both. It's not going to change. It's independent of M because we are changing M, but this guy is the same. So we can remove this from, uh, if you like, from the comparison in the, in the mathematical format. So we also know the conditional density function has one-to-one -one relation with the log likelihood function. So, uh, so we can uh, have in terms of log likelihood, because we equate them in the beginning, we can say that uh, we choose M if uh, the map rule becomes 
choose M if the look like if, if the likelihood becomes larger. Okay, but um, this is called now the maximum likelihood. Now that's that's going to be true if we have the probabilities to be the same. So we can also drop the probability. So the maximum likelihood. This is called the maximum likelihood decoding. Decoder that implements maximum likelihood decision. This is just terminology. Maximum likelihood is a decision role. The decoder that uses the maximum likelihood decision role, the likelihood is a parameter. The maximum likelihood is a role, decision role. And the decoder that use, uses that is called the maximum likelihood decoder. Maximum likelihood, maximum likelihood decoder computes the log likelihood function as matrix for all possible M symbols. And then we compare them, and then we decide in favor of the maximum likelihood. Here's an example of a graphical representation of maximum likelihood decision rule. Now let's say this area denotes the n-dimensional space for all possible vectors observations x. So our received signal can be represented as a point in this space. I can divide, I can partition the observation space z into m decision regions like z1, z2, z3, z4, and these are the partitioned regions, we can restate the maximum likelihood decision role as observation of x in a given region, and that makes it more probable. For example, if we are in any place in this region, any point at this region will have a maximum likelihood uh, of, of having transmitted message 1, and this is message 2, and so on. What if the observation point falls on the boundary? Remember, we have uh, a continuous uh, range, so this would have a probability of zero if you want to be strict. But even if it happens, we can flip a coin. So detector selects randomly the decision M equal to MI whether a K or K. Anything. If you, if you are exactly in the boundary, you can pick and choose. And this would be a very low probability. Now, the minimum distance decoded as a maximum likelihood decoder. We're still dealing with the maximum likelihood decoder. We can go into one specific case which is called minimum distance decoder under the following conditions so please focus on me the decision role discussed earlier are generic for any additive noise with no restriction on the distribution of w if the noise is additive white gaussian noise the maximum likelihood decision role is can be simply when we look at the likelihood we just need to look at the exponent of the exponential of uh, the gaussian so the observation vector will uh, will be simply looking at the distance. So we'll look at how far this from, how far is our vector away. So we subtract the two vectors, we get the, like a distance, and we choose the minimum distance. It can be shown that the likelihood, you know, the likelihood we have exponential, so the coefficient of exponential will be the same, and all changes is this is the coefficient of the Gaussian uh, distribution. So you want to maximize this probability. And to maximize this, remember that 1 over n is just the same for all, so it's not going to change. You keep changing your expected symbol, and you measure the distance. So basically, this one can be dropped. And instead of looking at minus, instead of maximizing this, it can minimize the opposite. So maximizing this is equivalent to minimizing the distance. And this is called now the minimum distance decoder. So under, under two conditions, if, if all symbols are equiprobable, and if we are dealing with Gaussian noise, or if you like monotonic noise in general, then we can use minimum distance decoder. OK, let's summarize here. And maybe in, in coming videos, I'll be giving you some examples to look at. The maximum likelihood decoding. The map role is given by choosing M where we have the maximum a posteriori probability. A posteriori means we have observed x. The map role in terms of Bayes' role, I am flipping the condition, so it's the same role, but utilizing Bayes' role. If we assume that all symbols are equivalent, we can use the likelihood, because the likelihood is going to be the same as map if uh, all a priori of all uh, transmitting of all symbols are equiprobable. So we can just look at the likelihood. 
or log likelihood. The maximum likelihood rule for identified Gaussian noise can be translated into distance, and this distance uh, metric, we can minimize this distance uh, metric. And of course, if, the, if all symbols are not equal then we have to keep, if, uh, if, if all symbols have no, not the same energy, we have to account for the energy when we, so this is true, but if you open the bracket, it will be translated to that. And in case you know that all symbols have the same energy, so this term can be dropped out, and uh, we got this. So once again, we have the map rule, which is the maximum of a surreal probability. Under equal probability condition, we can use the maximum likelihood rule. And if the noise is Gaussian, we can use minimum distance. And if the energy is the same, we can use the following. Okay, it might require you to stop view the video again, but I'll be giving you problems uh, in the class to work together. I'll be sharing this on my website, so please visit the website for the course website, and you'll find the link in the description. Please leave your comments and notes, and thank you very much for being good listeners.